Hello, I'm Izzy Wells and welcome to Uncovered, where we look at the creative scene in Taiwan. Now, at the end of October, I went along to Art Taipei, one of the biggest art fairs in Asia, and I was lucky enough to speak to one of the artists who was exhibiting there called Gabrielle Ma. Take a listen. My name is Gabby, and I'm um, the first time showing at the Art Taipei 30 years, and I'm a um, New York-based um abstract artist represented by Big Fine Art Gallery here in Taiwan. And it's um, it's a very um, rare opportunity for me to be able to join um, the show. And I've bring like about over 10 pieces of um, abstract acrylic works to show here. And um, I love how it's been going so far. And I'm very happy to share my art experience and art journey with, with um, you guys here. Yeah, they're, they're really beautiful. Now you have a very special story about what drove you to kind of pursue making paintings and, and things. Yes. And uh-huh. can you tell me more about that story? Yeah, of course. Um, I always love art and plus music. When I was like uh, in my early ages, I actually started um, playing piano a lot. I, I dreamed of being becoming a pianist. And then, but here and there, I also love drawings and painting and making crafting. And me and my sister always like sometimes fighting over materials <laughs> of what we want to use for our paintings. <laughs> I remember. And then somehow um, I started um, just venture into studying different subjects. And I, after graduating from college, I went to work at Sotheby's and art galleries. And that was uh, the turning point that, hey, I say to myself, I want to do more about art. So I then landed, uh, I went back to California and study um, art, um, Eastern Asian art history, and got my master and then continue my PhD study, though I didn't finish, but at UC San Diego. Wow, that's um, very impressive. <laughs> it was a couple of years. Um, and then I went, uh, moved to New York to work in uh, art and fashion communication um, agency. But it was because of COVID, so I moved back to Taiwan and accompanied my mom. Um, during that time, she was discovered to have Parkinson's. So the doctor says it's better that for the family to accompany her and do uh, some therapeutic activities or um, anything that can keep her spirit up. So uh, me and my sister somehow uh, discovered, discovered that, hey, art is so fun. We should just help as a mom to continue doing this with us. So in the beginning, we prepared the watercolor book. We would draw the um, background, the watercolor background, and, and uh, guided my mom to kind of use her her hand to draw the lines or add or fill in the colors and we had so much fun during that time and the time passes like you know one hour a day like every other day and we just have like different um, designs for her so I can tell that by doing this her spirit is very happy like she wants although she cannot she couldn't um, express herself well but through colors and through um, our collaborative works with between family members, sometimes we ask my dad to join too. Yeah. <laughs> and my dad, my dad would say, "Okay, he he draws the best. Like, he knows exactly how to draw." Oh, but, really? Yes, yeah, it, it was. It's very a creative fun. family. <laughs> In a way, my dad thinks so. Yeah. So, um, I think art is a way that. I and that can bound the family together. And for my mom's situation, especially because she's suffering a lot from the disease, uh, somehow art just um, keep uh, our spirit up. It was about the art therapy that I found that, hey, I, I want to help. Maybe I can help more people. So I, I somehow really delve more into color study and starting by doing abstracts, um, filling out more colors in different designs. I do it regularly and eventually uh, my friend introduced a gallerist to me, uh, which is my current gallerist representative, Nicole, who is also the director of the Behind Behind Art Gallery. She encouraged me so much and she said, hey, you have great potential. Why don't you continue doing this? I mean, Isabella, it's just like a, a, a turning point, another turning point in my life that I'm saying to myself, Yes, if I can help my mom, then I want to really express such magical healing power to the world and let everybody know that actually art can 
can be really appreciated by everybody and it's not difficult and uh, it can help so many people who's suffering or who's like um, having difficult time in life. Um, so I think my art has a mission and that's about it. I think, yeah, that's beautiful. Like the, the kind of healing value of art and, yes. and that's really important <laughs> as well. Because I think sometimes people forget, but it is, can yeah. really be a way to, like yeah, you so said, bring people together here. Yeah, some people say, hey, I don't know how to draw or I never, you know, I don't understand art or I, you know, it's my first time seeing art. Yes. I, I think, well, <laughs> it's art is everywhere. Everything is a, a form of art. The way you dress, the way you pick, the way you make decisions, the way you pick up a book. And even the way you think, I, I mean, everything can be abstract, everything can be tangible, but if you appreciate it through your own perspective and see it from, uh, with, by using imagination, I think art is just right there for you. Even for people who is not familiar with drawing, I think um, we're writing every day or we're typing every day or checking computer every day. The way we interact with the world um, if you use a very creative way, I think that's an art too. Yeah, I agree. Like you don't need to be incredible, uh, you know, doing really, I don't know, detailed drawings. Yes, you can just, exactly. It's just a way of expressing yourself, yeah, so right? Just play with it or handmade things or cooking or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So um, this, this is also another way that um, I think it's important for us to uh, embrace arts. Don't think art is really just high art and it's just only fine art. It's the Mona Lisa smile that you see in the museum. But somehow when, when you start like, hey, I can make a, a, what, make a cake or, or bake a cake or cook a dinner or something and, and, and hand drawing a, a card for my family's birthday, that's an art. Yeah. So was it this experience that you had of, of making that art and, and the positive effect that you saw it had yes. on your mom and your family mm -hmm. that made you want to really pursue this? Yes, that's, yeah. a, that's the thing that, because I, I found that my mom has a direct uh, reaction, even though she has difficulty expressing herself, but when, when she sees colorful paintings, like for example, I hang up my paintings all in her room in the beginning, and then my sister also want to show her watercolor pictures in her room. So somehow she reacts to those colors and she can you can see the smile on her face it creates it invites you to to let her go into your art and I think that's the beauty of it yeah that's really lovely for sure and you were born in LA mm -hmm. yes. grew up in Taiwan <laughs> your family have a Vietnamese background yes, it's Kind of so anyway. you've got a lot of <laughs> cultural influences going on. Uh -huh. Would you say this um, has an impact on your work at all? Does it influence it uh, in, yes. in any in way? way? I consider myself as a global citizen because I've been traveling so much too. Um, I was born in LA because my parents um, went to study and work in the US. And, and then they brought me back to Taiwan um, when I was little. But then I grew up in Taiwan and stayed until I graduated from college and moved back to California to, to pursue my graduate study. Somehow I just I spent a lot of time in the U.S., but I also traveled to Japan and, and, and France where we have family there. So um, I think I, I consider myself as a, a modern global citizen that I embrace every every part of the world and I love traveling. So for example, if when I'm checking an, a picture, a, a certain type of flower, I would see like, oh, is there similar flowers or similar species in, in Europe versus in Asia or something like that? I would first start asking a lot of questions like, what, what, what is it going on on the other side of the planet? I think in my, in my philosophy is like everyone is um, a part of the world. And right now, especially, there's uh, so much chaos and so much misunderstanding between cultures and fighting and, and, and after COVID. So I think we need to embrace, to open up our hearts and to really embrace, embrace the, the world and to share more live arts instead of fighting with each other. I, I, yeah, I agree. And, and you can see that in your paintings. It's got this lovely kind of positive 
energy and just yes. get great vibes. <laughs> <laughs> and you do That's focus on abstract painting. Yes. Uh-huh. And what was the decision behind uh, um, your, you know, wanting to pursue abstract painting? Yeah, at first, um, I really just, um, we sketch, we made sketch and it was like sort of picture with check pictures of my mom's old garden um, because she really loved gardening. She was also a florist. So we really started just checking in her um, the the old pictures and wanted to bring um, and want to bring up those old uh, sweet memories. And uh, I also started sketching the flowers and did some online cl- classes or went to um, st- uh, study in the classroom. And somehow I feel like flower itself is very auspicious. It accompanies our life and uh, it's a very. Um, it has a very endearing and sweet relation to what we're to our what we're living life. So um, when I try more and more sketch, I somehow find like, hey, it's interesting if I can just expand, you know, to really um, capture the essence of the flower spirit. This is is like bringing up blessings and connecting people from different cultures. So somehow through that idea, I want to find like a more abstract ideas like how to express the essence of flowers that's how i started Uh, amazing and you know abstract painting is as you've said it relies on people's own personal interpretation which is also something that's like really beautiful about it yes and so what do you hope to evoke in the viewers when you see my painting closely there's a lot of surprise like it can be an image of a flower but somehow it's uh, people also say that hey they see jellyfish they see sushi they see some food they see the the way that i i uh, um construct my painting is not very settled it's like it invites all kinds of imagination and interpretations so i think um in a way, it's it's very welcoming. It can become more than flowers, something in the nature, but it can also um, become something that makes you make people happy and think of um, like they're exploring the more in their imaginative worlds. Um, that's my goal. Because some people regarding like abstract art, they don't necessarily get it or they find it kind of hard to access. How do you balance that accessibility with, um, you know, allowing Think people? Yeah, art. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, abstract was still uh, an as an idea. Actually, all the abstract started from figurative. I mean, for um, for an artist like in my situation, like you have to have a. Um, uh, figurative idea. For example, I started focusing on flower. It's a uh, substance. It's um, a figurative thing. But the idea is that uh, you use your imagination and, and you see through colors, you see through the forms and the lines, the dots, that you try to find meanings in the um, in on the canvas. Then you can, if you can tell a story, I think it's very subjective. Some people can say, oh, what it is, and some people cannot. But abstract connects directly to you through those um, colors and forms. So that's a magical part of it. Would you say through this process, you as an artist, have you changed anything about your work? Maybe, you know, at the start, which you felt like, oh, that doesn't work anymore. Or, or kind of how have you progressed, I guess, in, in, in the things that you do? Yeah, in the beginning, I started by depicting like using color field. That means um, it's a geometric um, shapes that I paint only geometric shapes in the beginning of my practice. And I study the color combinations and what's what works with each other, what doesn't work. So that's how I started. But somehow through the progression of time, I grew out I grew out of the geometric shapes. I think like, hey, I wanna delve more into the real world the shapes in the real world, like flowers, I while we're always drawing trees and things. So it, it's it's like a little kid starting like, hey, I understand the world through only the forms, but somehow um, I learn more about the world and I want to put in my own interpretation in it. So any shape can have a different meaning to me. And that's how I started. Uh, somehow I, I progress it and have fun with it. And you, in your pieces, you have an amazing use of color like that gives it that kind of positive, vibrant energy. 
how do you go about choosing your colors? Thank you, Isabella. You have such a great interpretation of my <laughs> my my paintings. It's pretty um, free, like in a way, like it depends on my mood, depends on a lot of things I would prepare. But when I, when I first start painting, I prepare myself better. I would like, um, for example, to clean up things or to really make myself most comfortable in a situation that I can start painting. And then I face my work. Then then I face the canvas. So I think it's a very intuitive that it's like um, practicing a, a kind of ritual. And then the colors are are usually just I would coll I collect like thousands of images, and then I would just go around New York City. Or when I was in California, I collect um, flowers and stuff like that, just some fun stuff. So the colors are really a combination or reflection of what I was thinking during that time. And you also um, like to work with acrylic paints. And what's the reason behind that? Good question. <laughs> I think acrylic is relatively new and it dries very quickly because uh, I love layers and layers and I'm still um, not so senior in my practice. So I, I, I want to experience uh, experiment with a lot. So with acrylic, I just easily can layer on colors and uh, there's so many mediums in acrylic. For example, uh, I added fluid a medium and that uh, medium that can uh, make acrylic more um, versatile and it has this flowing um, special characteristics. So um, there's a, lo a lot of, of different fun part of acrylic that like, um, led me to start with very easily and then um, to experiment more. And the end of my pan um, painting practice, I would put on high gloss varnish. And so to make my painting look um, uh, somewhat glossy, but the color, it brings out the vibrancy of the color. I, I would like my paintings to feel very modern and easy to let people to interpret it. And, but it has its own characteristic, very courageous and very strong. And that's, that's the way I want to go. Yeah. And then and you do see the amazing layering that you do because of yeah, the Yeah, some people would even want to touch it. <laughs> it's not very <laughs> advice. It's not advice to touch it. But. And um, it's the last day of Art Taipei and it's uh, the 30th anniversary that it's yes. been going on. Yes. Um, what has the experience been like for you over the last couple of days? Yeah, it, it feels, at first it felt almost overwhelming because we had like about 150 galleries from different parts of the world, mainly in Asia, to participate. And especially this is my first time. So I was always like thinking of, oh, how do I, you know, um, invite people and would, would they really see my art and something like that. But I think the worries are not necessary because every artist is special. Every one of us has some unique story to tell um, to tell everybody. I wouldn't say there's good art or bad art. I mean, in order to show in Art Taipei, um, the, the, um, the committee already need to approve you through the gallery. So if you're selected into the, the show, that means your, your art is really um, being appreciated. So I think there's no bad art, good art. It's just like if people can understand your story more or resonate with you more. or So I, I think in a way, it's, it's, I'm feeling very blessed yeah, to be able to show my art. 100%. And Isabella has a great... <laughs> Great appreciation, and that's that's really I'm I'm really happy about it. Yeah, and I mean I was just here for this afternoon, but you I could also witness some lovely interactions with the people that came and watched. And there was um, uh, an elderly lady, and with her daughter I think, and that that was a very sweet inter interaction. And she was really appreciating the art, and it made you actually think about your own mum, didn't it? Yeah, the 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 fun part was that she even like rose up, st stood up from her wheelchair, and and wanted to. The, the her daughter say hey my mom want to stand up and see your picture and stand in front of it and, and, and take a picture and the other day a lady was like she, after I share my story she saw my panty she started telling me telling us her story her relations with her mom who was also suffering from illness then she started crying <laughs> there's many emotional moments that like I witnessed in front of my my in the show and especially through my art and that's the beauty of it like I, I feel like my art can 
connect and resonate with people. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And it, it sounds like it's been a wonderful couple of days. What's next for Gabby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a wrap up later in a couple hours. And then uh, in November, I flew back to New York because my uh, art studio is based in New York, Tribeca. Uh, I would love to get more involved with the New York art community and also to really uh, establish my roots there because that's where I practice my, my art. And later I would still, of course, I would love to travel and to join even more art fairs and find opportunities to um, tell my stories through art. And I hope you, you guys out there would to come check out my art. Yeah. My uh, Instagram handle is gmararts. Yeah, I was going to say, if uh, those listening want to find out more about you and your artwork, where is the best place for them to look? Uh, Instagram. Instagram? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And do you have, you have a website as well? Yeah, gabrielmar.com. Perfect. I'll include it in the description box. Yay. Yay, amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today, Gabby. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. You're a lovely host. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you for listening to Uncovered. See you next week. Bye. Bye.